Uh, hello, this is Sultana. I'll be reading a poem called Keats's Scottish Tour. Uh, this has been excerpted from my manuscript, Stake in Eternity, which contains many speculative, surreal, and fantastical poems on the life and works of Keats, uh, various other romantic poets and other poets still. And of course, troubling these poets are fates, uh, graces and sirens. We don't know why. Okay, so here goes. Keats's Scottish Tour. On wild goose chase, why had he been led? Punishment rhymed with aching feet. Mixed up stanzas, vowels had bled. More than him, none could self-beat. Was William conjuring clouds of Tory fame? Robert must have waded through heaps of dung. Burned by reality, his muse felt lame. Upside down drained verses now hung. Fraternal ears, fr furry nostrils were gone. Would Frero blame abandonment guile? Soon he'd be weary, couldn't think or mourn. Would Tom accost him in a skipper heart while? Guilt grew strides, guilty grew strides, despite painful toes. Poisy family duty could he juxtapose. Uh, so just to give some context to this poem, uh, Keats had left his younger brother Tom in London, who was actually sick uh, under the care of other people. And he had gone on a walking tour of Scotland with his friend Brown hoping to get uh, inspiration to write his poems. He also wanted to see the country where Wordsworth had lived and where Robert Burns um, had lived and died as well. However, uh, this tour wasn't really a big success and, uh, and he felt quite guilty uh, about leaving Tom behind as, we, as far as we can surmise from his letters. And uh, later on, he would perhaps, uh, to, uh, William Wordsworth would no longer be a hero of uh, Keats because he called <laughs> Wordsworth's poems uh, the egotistical sublime. Oh, there's a long story behind that. And uh, he was a bit disappointed when he, re Keats was a bit disappointed when he reached the, the, the early residence of Robert Burns. But, well, we live and we learn, and that was the case with Keats as well. Thank you for watching.